Hello there, welcome to Hashtag Entrepreneurship Tuesday right here on Y in the morning at Y254 channel. At Y254 channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles at Michelle Ashira is where you can reach out to me. So in this particular session, you know how we do it's that interview. So we're looking at eligibility criteria, criteria to study in abroad. So if you're back at home and you're interested uh, to just uh, go abroad and uh, pursue your studies, further your study, this is an opportunity for you. So make sure you stick around for this conversation and you'll know how you'll go about it. In studio, I am joined by Joy Atieno and she is the CEO of Epic. Thank you very much for creating time to be with us. Thank you, Michelle. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing, do I'm doing good. I'm doing good. <laughs> so studying us off, yeah? For someone who's watching this conversation and you're mentioning an opportunity to study abroad, mm -hmm. what is Epic? What is Epic all about? Well, EPIC is uh, the Educational Path International Consultants okay. and um, we take care of international education and sports science. Okay. So we support students and, you know, I mean, students doesn't necessarily mean only the high school um, leavers. We also support uh, 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 professionals who would like to pursue their master's degree and their postgraduate and their PhD um, degrees. Um, then we take them through the entire um, application processes and then finally pre-departure and into the university. So we've got a number of universities that we, um, uh, EPIC has partnered with um, on contract basis and uh, those universities we fully represent them in Kenya and the entire Africa and uh, we also support their educational projects, events, conferences, and uh, sports as well. We also take care of scholarship opportunities where we, we have a few universities who are willing to, you know, uh, give a certain percentage of scholarships to students. All right. Yeah. You mm. know, prior to this conversation that you're having right now when you were introducing me to EPIC, I felt like it was way easier if I reached out to an educational agent uh, than just Going through the whole application on yeah. my own, <laughs> what initiated uh, the birth of Epic? Well, first I like to give back, and um, one of the ways I would give back is to provide a service that is a basic need, hence mm -hmm. education, and then hence Epic. So um, having also ready resources, mm -hmm. uh, ready market to support me through this course, I decided to start Epic, and and here I, I am. Ah. trying to you know make make it happen in africa all matters international education okay <laughs> so how long have you guys been running and uh, uh officially since may 2020 okay so we are about how many months now uh quick number quick check, quick check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but mm -hmm. just a few months uh, mm -hmm. running and uh, so far so good. I'm happy with the progress, really. Uh, I'm impressed. Okay. And my team is working so very hard to make sure that we get to the point where um, it's, it's all about epic. All right. Go epic. <laughs> Absolutely. So for someone who is also uh, watching us and are wondering how do they go about it and uh, uh, how does the application uh, process uh, look like? How long does it take? Oh, what you do, firstly, is we, we really market ourselves on social media. Mm -hmm. We are very uh, big on uh, putting the word out there uh, on social media. So the brand team would, you know, uh, put uh, flyers and, and offers and, and application um, uh, calls to social media. And then we also work very closely with uh, international high schools and their counselors. So once you get to understand uh, what we are all about that means we also pass on to the website we would request you to write us an email with, mm -hmm. with what your interests are what you want to pursue then now we identify a university for you abroad as per your qualifications and also as per your interests so you want to take a master's in journalism I would you know definitely highly recommend the University for the Creative Arts in the UK they are our partners uh, we show you what they offer um, uh, the you know the the, the courses on offer mm -hmm. some of them call them majors and now uh, also the prerequisites so then you decide that okay fine I'm okay with the UCA we call it 
the university for creative arts um, then now we start the process we apply on your behalf all right we just ask you for your papers that's your transcripts your passport and then we apply on your behalf and now uh, you'll receive an, an offer letter from that university okay now once you receive an offer letter that automatically means you've been accepted mm -hmm. to join that university mm -hmm. and then they'll request you to make the tuition fee directly to them epic does not take any fee from any student mm -hmm. and no charge we, we don't charge we don't charge any fee mm -hmm. so you pay directly to the university and um then after the payment you th you'll receive the second uh, you know the confirmations and then we start you off the visa process mm -hmm. depending again on where you're going to there's a uk visa process there's a european visa process mm -hmm. there's american visa process um after that then we set you to to get into the plane and fly all right <laughs> joe you'll agree with me apart from yeah. this being um you giving back yeah mm -hmm. so also, there's also a business aspect of it when you look at it in a different mm -hmm. angle mm -hmm. and my question will be what gap did you see in the market space that you felt like epic is going to fill that gap well the uniqueness that epic um executes so firstly like i mentioned we work with uh, uh closely with international uh schools yes. and their counselors why do we do that because we want to capture um, we want to actually capture their interests. You know, it's not always about international education, but then there's sports, nurturing talent. I don't hear people speak so much about nurturing talent, but then EPIC comes in and brings, you know, universities from, I mean, the global universities to support this talent. So we hold sports tournaments. We haven't had any yet, but we are looking to have one next year, a big sports tournament for international schools in Nairobi. Um, <clears throat> we also try as much as possible to, you know, put the students close to us. We, we keep following up on them. Once they, even when they go abroad to study, we still want to know how is, you know, they're, how are they adapting to that uh, region or country that they've gone to study in. Okay. okay, and someone might wonder, why should I consider to study abroad? And also, considering the challenges that you're going through in the world with the global Currently, pandemic. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. world one. Now it's tough for sure. Yes. It's tough now to even convince a student to study mm -hmm. abroad because they do not know, from what we've seen on news, they're not sure if uh, they're going to be safe. And you know, we've got, uh, I've got one, one friend who's uh, in security and he tries to make me understand that uh, it's just, you know, a temporary um, uh, situation, but mm -hmm. we're going to overcome it. But again, why study abroad? Oh, please, international education, go global. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the exposure. Exposure, yes. yeah. The, I mean, for myself, having to travel so many countries in this world for professional purposes, sometimes leisure, I tend to understand that traveling opens your mind. It, it gives you the opportunity to uh, be open-minded and then, you know, express yourself confidently mm -hmm. you know think critically so yeah mm -hmm. all right when you look at uh, we have talked about how exciting it is to just move to you know a different country uh -huh. and the culture exposure uh -huh. and everything else are there pre-orientation uh, departure uh, session do you have with your students just to tell them what, what exactly to find on the other side absolutely we definitely and that now is where the you know uh, associate directors from those universities come together with with epic and we pre-orient the students we okay. let them know that this is what you expect in the usa or australia or the uk um, this is the kind of reception you're going to have this is the people who are going to take care of you in case you have any problems here are the emergency numbers i mean i'm always 24 7 available myself uh, <coughs> my pa thinks i'm insane because i'm always so super responsive <laughs> but it's because you know uh, the time difference again so you always have to be at par with whoever is where at what time okay. yeah so we take them through that pre-orientation are you into this full-time am I doing this full-time yes yes I am okay mm, that's my full-time job right. <laughs> what's the business plan looking like and the the way forward considering like we just started this year mm -hmm. so what 
way forward what's the business plan looking like way forward mm -hmm. well we are currently trying to register epic in mauritius mm -hmm. and then we move to rwanda and then we go to south africa and finally i think we'll have another you know uh, branch office in arizona mm -hmm. uh, because um, i definitely work with so many u.s institutions mm -hmm. and i think having a physical presence there is is important that's a way for that's one of the ways forward but again also um, starting 2021 hopefully the first quarter we'll be able to run our uh, student recruitment tours across Africa that means city to city about three days in each city just trying to you know um, sell the universities to, to, to students in, in different countries mm -hmm. and that we also partner with the, the universities so they travel all the way to Africa for just that and it's also fun you know right. city to city tour who wouldn't want to be part of that okay. <laughs> so are there virtual classes that uh, young guys can uh, you know get involved in or apply and just be part of uh, different experience from a global scale that is uh, absolutely currently we are having so many online or you call them virtual classes we're mm -hmm. also having so many virtual conferences virtual fairs mm -hmm. everything that would be would have been done physically is now uh, completely turning into an online uh, uh, platform mm -hmm. so definitely we have the uh, online classes but I think students are not really receptive about the online classes mm -hmm. but don't worry we will we'll take care of you <laughs> soon we are going to be back on 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 the air to to fly and, and go and study yeah. do you feel like uh, studying abroad gives you a better uh, chance when it comes to uh, job opportunities well as epic we are trying to build very strong magnets with the uh, corporations especially um, in conjunction with our partner universities. So we would work very hard to ensure that our partner universities are partnering with corporations so that in students are having you know, a high ratio of employability mm -hmm. immediately after graduation. But that's entirely up to how the student you know, works very hard and ensures that they get the good grades to be able to be recruited in some corporations abroad. But again, that's one of the questions we get from students. What is the value here? Are we you know after after school then what <laughs> so we try to make them understand that here are the uh, corporations we are partnering with mm -hmm. and uh, if you're taking IT definitely there's IT for you if you're taking engineering there's engineering for you and so on okay mm -hmm. speaking about value what is, mm -hmm. what is your niche in the market space when it comes to uh, an you know being an educational agent because we have a mm -hmm. couple of them in Kenya mm -hmm. so what is your what is different about Epic? Mm -hmm. Like I mentioned earlier, we are trying to be as unique as mm -hmm. possible and ensure that each student understands each of our services stepwise to the end. Mm -hmm. And uh, also introducing uh, programs like sports science, where you don't hear so much about sports science, do you? <laughs> so Not now, really. now here we are. Epic has uh, brought in the aspect of sports science, and we are going to make sure that as soon as travel allows, we definitely are going to run uh, sports activities that are also going to benefit academia. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Have you had uh, students before in terms of just uh, uh, asking them asking for this opportunity to study abroad and have you, how many of you like, uh, you know, taken to abroad and just take up their classes? Oh, well, we've got all over 600 students who uh, approach us mm -hmm. for, for our services and also trying to figure out their ways out there so currently no as as covid happened mm -hmm. uh not so much was going on in terms of uh, sending students abroad mm -hmm. but we've got tons of applications uh we've got students who have applied they've received their offer letter so we're just waiting for travel to kick in and there we go all right <laughs> when you look at it in a different perspective uh, someone may say that it could be expensive uh is there an opportunity whereby uh like a counselor, IDP counselor from the other side could just work with the student to just uh, ensure that an opportunity that comes up to work within their budget. Yeah, and there goes the scholarship opportunities as well. Mm -hmm. But if you're not up to a scholarship and you just want to have a, a campus or university that is not uh, very expensive, we identify that for you. We, we go through our options and we also send you the fee structure and then you will decide as per your budget what you can 
go for but international education for sure is very expensive mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's all worth it all definitely right. all worth it okay. yeah mm. what are a couple of financial lessons that you've learned along the way while studying epic, epic? Date? Yeah. so i'm not very good with spending mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so i'm trying as much as possible to to keep the expenditures low and and so that we balance the revenue that that uh, epic uh, brings in mm -hmm. but uh, so far i'm trying my level best that's one of my weaknesses but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm getting there we will get to a point where um the finance team will will allow me to stay away from that and and they take care of it as by their skills i didn't study finance so. mm -hmm. <laughs> How many employees? How many employees do you have, and how how have you guys been keeping afloat during times of COVID? Ah, uh, well, I am outsourcing a lot, so each of my department is outsourced. I do not yet look into having um, uh, permanent uh, employees right away from the legal team the, to uh, the marketing team to finance to you know it's it's all uh, just outsourced companies that can work for me. What is uh, the intention behind that? Uh, well, they've, you know, first of all, they are well, well established. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you're starting um, a business, you have to ensure that you get it right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So um, at this point, uh, we've not gotten to the point where we understand, you know, as a, as a recruiter, we understand what we need to actually identify in a marketer as good as what an established marketing team would have done it so again to save on time you know and then this is covid period but definitely in 2021 i look into having permanent employees to to i have some of them for okay. sure but then and increase the number and then have them just to, to work for epic i love giving opportunities so definitely guys look out for 2021 <laughs> <laughs> all right a couple um, of achievement stories that you have for us oh well this is a huge achievement you know sometimes i sit down and i'm signing the contracts mm -hmm. huge 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 contracts with with this partner universities the latest which made me extremely happy is uh um canterbury christchurch university in the uk um, they just um, appointed me as their education ambassador in Africa. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I can't wait for the party. All right. I hope I'll be invited. <laughs> you will be invited for sure, Michelle. Okay. And uh, of course, uh, having to, you know, represent universities in Africa. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a huge role. Mm -hmm. At the same time, it's very sensitive. It comes with its own challenges. Yeah. But I can make it. Together with my team, we are going to make the universities extremely happy mm -hmm. in Africa. You mm. mentioned something very important and I wouldn't want us to miss on that, that mm. your, links, uh, your links in uh, you know, the international universities. Mm -hmm. How do you get connected to them? How do you get an opportunity to network, to even get an opportunity mm -hmm. whereby you actually get the opportunity of just being an educational agent out there? Mm, well, so firstly, mm -hmm. um, the networks I've developed before in my you know, previous career and also um, <coughs> uh, being able to write proposals. I draft proposals and I send them out to universities that I've heard are going to do well in Africa. Okay. And then you wait for the response. But again, some of the universities have been able to find them through referrals. You know, the partner universities already in place refer me to their colleagues and and it makes me happy because when you're referred it really means you're trying to make sure that things are in place okay mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. winding up what are a couple of challenges that you're facing time difference <laughs> time difference is a mess mm -hmm. my sleep patterns are a bit uh, uh not very normal uh, but i do my six hours they say eight hours but i do six hours a day and I start my day at 3 a.m. Why? Because first of all, I'm very productive in the morning. And secondly, I am able to, you know, um, uh, be at par with, for example, U.S. institutions. At that time, they're just trying to, to, to wind up their day. And then I would stay up all the way to 10 p.m. Because okay. at 10 p.m. for them, it's in the morning. Um, and then you look at Japan, you look at Australia, you look at Korea. I mean, the time difference is all over the place. So I have to make sure that I take care of all that between 3 a.m. 
and 10 p.m. But I look at stuff very positively. Uh, I, of course, I experience challenges like sometimes I get overwhelmed. The work is not very easy. Being a CEO of an international organization definitely is not um, one of the roles that you can easily uh, navigate. But with positivity, discipline, uh, being strategic, being systematic, and also being a very good planner, you definitely overcome them and then you keep smiling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a witness to that. You keep smiling. Yeah? Oh, right. smile in cheek. <laughs> So if Joy is not busy um, uh, oh, building huge the empire social life. <laughs> <laughs> of Epi, what does she do? I have a great social life. Mm -hmm. I, I respect my social life. I don't work on weekends. So mm -hmm. weekends is for um, mingling with friends, um, glasses of wine here and there. We also enjoy, uh, you know, going out. Nowadays the clubs are open, so mm -hmm. I can do with an hour or two. Live bands, right. nyamachoma, yeah. <laughs> hiking. Right. And you so have a lovely more. body physique. Does that have to do with the fact? I do exercise every day. Yeah, I skip <laughs> rope. I lift weights. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Faithfully. Oh, faithfully. Yes. You do have Except a when I visit my all. mother, because uh -huh. when I'm there, I'm a baby. She mm -hmm. takes care of me. I still sleep with my mom. Okay. Oh, nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. mm -hmm. <laughs> I think we should never lose the girl side of us, no matter how old Oh, you are. yes. Oh, yes. And, and, and no matter how busy you can get. I get busy. Mm. Oh, Monday to Friday. Oh, my God. I get crazy busy. Um, but weekends, give me a call. <laughs> and Joy will show up. Yeah. A beautiful smile. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, guys, uh, reach out to you if they want to keep this conversation going. Well, I would leave uh, our email, info mm -hmm. at epicl.org, info at epicl.org, and we will be able to respond to you. No social media accounts? Uh, we have at EduPath Int. EduPath, it's Ed yes. Educational Path International, oh. but we've shortened it to at EduPath uh. INT. Okay. Yes. On uh, Facebook, Instagram. On Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Okay. Yeah. All we right. are noise makers there. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know because our guys are so very active on social media. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. thank you very much, Joy, for creating sure. time to be with us. Very nice Taking us through on how we can actually get an opportunity to study abroad. And please, just not study, travel. Travel, travel the world. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, travel so the world as much as you can. Thank when you. you have much. the opportunity to uh -huh. get on that plane and take off. <laughs> mm. Very true. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Joy. Yeah. Okay. So, guys, back at home, make sure you don't tap that down. Remember, you can follow us across all our social media handles. That is at Y254 channel. At Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across all my social. We'll be right back.